All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Monday, April 4th, 2022. If you've not done so yet, please like, comment, subscribe, etc. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. As of today, it is now official. Elon Musk does own 9.2% of Twitter. Um, so a power move here. Let's take a look at the stock. Um, so obviously there is talk about him criticizing the platform for you know them censor you know censorship and so on and so forth so he just said hey i'm just going to fix the problem myself and went out and bought uh the majority share uh, uh holdings of the company so uh, i'm sure their board of directors is uh, probably not happy about that but um that's something they're gonna have to live with now as far as the stock is concerned you're you are getting up into resistance here uh it did pull back a little bit this morning it's natural you know you, you gap up that much people are going to want to take profits um, but it is pushing higher here it is into that 200 moving average you got this pivot and this breakdown area so as for the stock it is getting a little uh you know it's a you know it's into resistance take a look at the weekly here weekly 50 ma weekly 100 so it's into a pretty good uh distribution zone and anybody who bought in this area is now a bag holder or was a bag holder for a while so Makes sense that it may uh, pull back from there, but nice move for the stock and a nice move for the markets here today. If you take a look at the heat map, it's pretty much all big tech, though. Um, so, you know, a lot of I see a lot of people critical about the rally. Breadth is pretty weak today, and um, it's a lot of it is big tech led. Take a look at Tesla here. Uh, usual culprit up 5.65% here, pushing into the close. Apple also up 2%. Take a look at this. Uh, hourly consolidation beautiful pattern there and nice pop there so that should continue into the close um, nothing wrong when you see a stock move sideways like that after a big move um, and this should continue a bit higher and the important thing to remember right now overall is that um you know the yeah breadth is poor but conditions you know this is why i've been saying for the last couple weeks you know it's not really a good area to short conditions don't favor it the volume's light take a look at the volume only 38 million shares traded we're almost at 3 30 p.m today um so very light here on the spiders and if you look at this pull, you know, I said, look, you know, there's not much meat on this bone. From here to here is only 2.8%. So that was the, the whopping pullback we had, and we're getting a nice move here. Doesn't mean we can't, you know, make a lower high and come back down or something like that. Um, but again, there's just not a lot of meat on this bone right here um, overall for the for, for to be really shorting. And, you know, if conditions change, of course, I'll be the first to let you know. But, um, you know, if they do change, then we can talk about maybe, you know, putting on some shorts or something like that. But at this current time, the market doesn't really want to do that. And it, sometimes this takes time to work out. And, you know, that's you just got to go with the flow. Don't fight the ocean. Otherwise, you'll drown. Anyways, um, good areas having some upside today. Tech, take a look at Adobe here. Um, Cloud software is having a nice day. Up, Adobe up 2%. Oracle up 2.6. Nice move there. Um, Unity Software, which we own, we bought this last week on this nice little consolidation pattern. Little test candle on Friday, a nice pop today, up over 9% there. So nice move for cloud stock. Snowflake is up 2.6% as well. Um, so cloud getting a nice move, and that is helping to lift tech. Um, triple Q's here up just under 2%. Again, nice move, pulling back off these moving averages and now getting a bid. Again, doesn't mean it's going to go straight up, could have to do some more backing and filling, but I said, you know, really over the weekend that there's a good chance we could put in a higher low here and make another move up. Uh, and that's for the broad indices. That's the Qs, spiders, everything. Um, and I do think that will happen. Now, um, does that necessarily change the bearish outlook for 2022? No, it doesn't necessarily change that. Um, but you have to understand, you know, people get so obsessed with one side and they say, oh, you know, I'm bearish for this year. And then they fail to make money. I mean, you, the bears failed to make money on this move. That's really what it comes down to. You're leaving all this meat on the bone uh, by being stubborn short the whole time. You got to play both sides of the market. And that's how you're really going to to essentially be a Hall of Fame trader. You, you know, if you fail to do that, you're not going to you're not going to make the gain. You're going to leave so many gains on the table over time. And that's what swing trading is really all about. Anyways. Dow here via the diamond here getting you know it's up weaker uh, up less so than the nasdaq and the uh, s p um, a lot of the consumer goods names are kind of flattish right now um it's really more of a big tech type rally and obviously i said cloud is having a nice day um seems some of the cloud stocks starting to bid up right now igv we'll look at that in a minute too but that's getting a nice bit into the close here uh, but overall dow um apple is a you know good component of it and that is helping the dow here as you can see the market's getting a bit here off of apple pumping Anyways, um, when the Dow is lagging, it's not really a big deal. So um, you really want to see the NASDAQ lead anyway. But um, anyways, moving on here to the Russell. 
A little bit of weakness earlier today, so there was some distribution this morning. Um, so that is a bit of a negative. So again, uh, everybody was talking about breadth earlier and saying how weak it was. Um, this is part of what they're talking about here. It's just big tech led for the most part today. Um, and again, one day doesn't make a trend, but we'll see. Maybe this um, 212 area held up, is going to hold up after all. You know, nothing to say that Russell can't maybe get up to 215. Uh, since we potentially put in a higher low here, but we'll see what happens if we, when we get up into this red bar and back up to this 100 moving average. But the Russell was a little bit noticeably weaker earlier today. Anyways, semis, um, having an okay day, up 1.5%. I would like to see these uh, perform a little bit better here, though. So a nice little dip here. Got a good test candle on Friday and now getting a bid. You want to see it clear this you know, with, with the triple Q's up 2%, you want to see the semis up at least 2% as well. And they're not really, it's not really even doing that. Um, not even taking out Friday's high. So that is a bit of a, con bit of a concern, but we'll see what happens tomorrow and we'll see what happens throughout the rest of the week. Um, but definitely make note of that. Uh, we talked about IGV. Again, that should get up to that 360 handle I told you about. It may even get a little bit higher now. So there's a chance maybe we can get up to 364, 365, somewhere in that range, but um, nice little pullback. And I think I made note of this over the weekend in a weekend video. This was a nice pullback. You know, you really, basically you just filled this gap and got a nice pop. Um, whereas a lot of other things, you know, for instance, the semis had a much weaker or, or the pullback was much steeper rather. Um, and so cloud is uh, showing a little bit of leadership here for a change. Um, it's been a weak sector really all year, but um, nice little move there uh, for cloud software. Anyways, Dow transports. So this filled that gap. And then we uh, came down here and back tested this trend line. You're getting a bit off of it. So, you know, maybe there is some hope out there for the transports, but that is an ugly reversal on Friday, especially for them to do that on a Friday too. That's a, a powerful move. But, um, you know, it's a good chance it makes a 50% retrace of that. But um, outside of that, I don't see a whole lot of strength here on the transports. They lost, um, there was a lot of, um, you, you know, the inventories and uh, the shipping uh, rates are down and stuff like that on um on Friday, which can, you know, obviously is not a good economic indicator. And if you have a yield curve inverting, that is kind of a confirming signal, so to say. So um, pay attention to those transports. Um, if they can't make, you know, if they can't erase this red bar, that is a, you know, a pretty big problem here uh, on the table. Anyways, speaking of rates here, uh, interest rates, 10 year up 1.5%. Nothing really new to report there. It's just kind of chopping sideways. Same thing with the 30 year coming into that 20 moving average. We'll see if we can get a bit off of that, but really not a whole lot going on today in the rate land outside of high yield debt, which actually got a nice bit. So we talked about this last week, came up here, tested that 20 MA, filled the gap, and then you know came off the lows on Friday and now getting some follow through. So if this can make a higher high, that would be a really, really big positive for the market. So you know, we're not saying it necessarily happens, but this is holding up okay for now. And if and if this does hold up okay, the market will be able to hold up as well. Anyways, fins here. So XLF pulling back to the kind of this gap window area. Uh, broker dealers, slightly positive here, up 26 basis points. Nothing major here. A little bit of weakness in some of these names. I mean, Morgan Stanley getting a, a decent bid. JPM's leading right now, which is a good sign. J you know, if JPM holds up, then generally financials will hold up. Uh, Goldman a little bit on the weaker side. And BAC and Wells Fargo also kind of flattish to negative as well. So Finn's getting a little bit less of a bounce here. Again, Rally is primarily tech-led right now and uh, big tech specifically. Um, home builders XHB and ITB continue to, to underperform the market. You know, ITB is up 1%, but, you know, still well below, you know, still making lower highs uh, and lower lows for that matter, and still well below both of these red bars here. So we've got to be careful with this industry group. Um, I, they are, they are, you know, again, like we just talked about the transports showing some weak economic signs. This is not a good one either. So again, keep that on your radar. VNQ is trying to flag here, um, but it is into a wall of resistance up here. So it's gonna it's gonna need to do a lot to get through that, uh, but it is holding up for now and trying to hang on. All right, so energy, let's look at crude here. So again, just getting a bid here off the 50 moving average. Again, we'll watch for lower highs. This red bar high will be important because that will coincide with this trend line. Um, so if it cannot get through this trend line, or at least, you know, if you can't get above this trend and then confirm, um, it's probably going to come back down and back test this. And then you have to hit this level again. And you've already hit it twice. You hit that 50 twice. 
you've hit this trend line essentially twice as well. So we'll see if it can hold again uh, one more time if it does get down there. But um, that's really kind of the be all end all for energy right now. I know XLE is holding up really well. XOP made a new 52 week high. Um, OIH is hanging in there very well. But again, if crude breaks down, then these um, energy stocks will probably correct as well. All right, now uh, net gas, flattish today, little doji candle on the daily, nothing wrong with it. Again, this is on breakout, so it's probably got to do some consolidation, but Overall, I don't see any problems here with Nat Gas dollar index. It's up nicely today, up uh, 37 basis points. Nothing crazy, but again, it's just flagging here or trying to flag. Again, we talked about this weekly resistance. It's a ton of it, so it's got to do a lot of backing and filling to get through that. So dollar index is in chop land for now. Same thing with gold here in the near term. Um, you can make a case again that it's kind of bear flagging a little bit. Um, so maybe it does make a bit of a move lower here. But I do like how you negated that monthly inside bar. And um, just to show you guys one more time. So we did get a monthly close above that uh, last month. And that is a very bullish signal for gold. So, you know, maybe it is on, you know, breakout on a longer term perspective. So we'll keep that on our radar. GDX, a little bit of a reversal today. So some weakness. Let's take a look at SILJ, also reversing as well. But, you know, again, again, nothing terrible with the pattern. I still like it on the weekly time frame. And silver showing a little bit of weakness as well here, uh, retesting that 50 MA. But, you know, again, you can make a case it's, it's trying to flag up a little bit here. So we'll see what kind of pattern we get moving forward. Platinum also flagging, just kind of chopping around. Palladium, same kind of deal. Don't like either of those charts right now. And copper is trying to, trying to flag as well. You did test 480 again. So, you know, the longer it hammers on that, the the... the the, the weaker that level will get. Um, so we'll see what it can do later in the week. But for right now, it's just trying to consolidate. All right, flipping over here to the coins. So Bitcoin uh, pulling back just a little bit off the highs. This isn't a terrible pattern though. So it's doing what you want it to do. It's hitting that 200 moving average. And again, it's, it's trying to back and fill, but this is a lot of chop that you have to get through. This is all resistance. And personally, I don't think it's got much upside in it, at least not at the moment. And same thing with Ether, getting up into that 200 moving average. But again, it's trying to consolidate too, but this is such a wall up here too that it's going to take a lot to get through that. But for now, they're holding up, so we'll give them the benefit of the doubt for the time being. All right, flipping back over here to the spiders. Let's see, it's about 3.30, so it looks like we're going to push up into the close. Apple is getting a nice move. Again, that hourly, hourly consolidation was really nice here. Seeing a few other things on my screens, other screens here. Uh, start to move up into the close. So we should get a little bit of a bid, some follow through um, going into the closing bell. But overall, again, you know, markets pulled back a little bit and everybody's trying to short. Everybody's just assumed that like, okay, it's supposed to pull back here. So we need to short, but um, it's just adding fuel to the squeeze and they're just continuing to squeeze it. They're gamma squeezing Apple, they're gamma squeezing Tesla, but you know what? They can do that. And they have more money than you do and you can't push it you know you, you know you trying to short it isn't going to help it's going to it's just going to it's it's going to add more fuel so really you guys got to wait for a sell signal here i know everybody want everybody's asking me when we can when can we short when can we short don't get in the way of a freight train like i said earlier fight the ocean and you're going to drown um but you know if we get a sell signal obviously i'll be the first one to say hey like now things are changing but at the moment Market's holding up. VIX is getting hit. Um, the VIX, I do believe, has a little lower to go um, before it gets a major bounce. But we'll see what happens when we get there. We'll take it one day at a time, as always. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. You guys have a great rest of your day. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com. Take care, and I'll talk to you all tomorrow.